Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the one and only Sean from Think Media. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, Michael. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about, because I'd love your opinion on this. You're a visionary. You've been doing this a lot longer. You're helping people every day. Uh, obviously, I have a channel. It's right around 40,000 subscribers. Been doing it for four years, helping people every day. But once you get to a certain size, you know, people start coming to you going, hey, I want to do what you're doing. And a few people that have been doing that have succeeded. They're still doing it after a year. But I have to tell you, man, 80% of the people that say they're going to start either never start or stop within six months. Do you see any rhyme or reason why some people, most people fail to get that momentum and, you know, others succeed? Do you have any thoughts on that? Cause I have some, but uh, you've been doing this longer. Yeah, I think, uh, uh many thoughts. One is, um, it's not asking what do you want? It, that's the wrong question. Cause someone might say, okay, I see what Michael's doing. I want to start building my influence on YouTube. I want the influence, the impact and the income that could come from that. The better question is what are you willing to give up? Ooh, because, and this is the law of sacrifice. I think people underestimate what it takes to build a YouTube channel. Now there's smart shortcuts that you can do to make it sustainable, but people think, okay, I'm going to upload a video this week and sneak in some time and do another one, but they don't actually really number. The second thing would be, they don't make a system. They don't actually create a system and integrate it into their lifestyle. Content creation is not a one-time event. It is a lifestyle. So what are you willing to give up? That would say, okay, how am I going to carve out time on my calendar? This is just not going to happen if you don't carve out time on your calendar. So what am I willing to give up? It might mean I need to delegate something in my business. I'm willing to give up that up. I might give up leisure for a season. I mean, if I'm going through this recession, I'm not going to, I might put some things to the side because I need to fight for my family and fight for our future and really commit to this thing. And, and then carve out that time on your calendar so that it can be filled with that intentional time for uh, for content creation. So what are you willing to give up the law of sacrifice and then create the system, which would be what gets scheduled gets done. I mean, you've got a routine, you've got a plan. It was a perfect at the start, but I think it's creating routines and rhythms and habits for lack of habit. There's, I think it's that great book on habit. I just, I never read the book, but I, I read a bunch of quotes from, I believe Charles Duhigg, I think. And it was goal setting is, is actually flawed. We actually, like, we really shouldn't set goals. We should find habits. We should commit to habits that actually help us reach the goals. Like that would be the missing piece is like, and we teach a lot that there is results goals and there is action goals. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we'll say, okay, so I want to start a YouTube channel. I want 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So you go, okay, new year's resolution. That's a, that's a, that's a good, but the, the problem is what if instead of even saying that, what's your new year's resolution? My new year's resolution is to post one YouTube video a week. Yeah. Two, two different ways to approach it. Do you, do you say I want to lose 20 pounds or do I want to walk 20 minutes every day? Exactly. So, Hey, my new year's resolution is to walk 20 minutes every day. The byproduct becomes 20 pounds fall off over the next year. And so creating systems that are, you know, according to the YouTube best practices, I think that's what breaks, uh, breaks people down. Cause people go, oh, I got busy. Something yeah. happened in my life. Trouble came three months into it. Some stuff, I got disrupted. Here's what I can promise everybody. Listen to this. I guarantee you, you will be facing disruptions, trouble, challenges with a team member, with a family member, with your health. So, so you want to be prepared for those and have habits that supersede. Of course, if you got to rest, take time off, take care of yourself. But it's like the difference between, Michael, those who st stand the test of time and keep going and those who don't is I think that they forget about the law of sacrifice and they don't create the systems. Yeah, so there's so much in that. One, one of the things that that this really hits home for me is you've heard me talk about uh, folk, uh, buy box and daily discipline, right? That's what I'm trying to teach people. It's not go get a rental. No, it's get a buy box, look at it every day. You will learn average. And then once you know average, you can write great offers, right? It's a series of steps. Anybody with enough down payment can buy a deal, but that doesn't make it a deal. It could be a bad, you could be an alligator. It could be a bad deal. 
right? It's it's it is a process. I love that. It's not lose 20 pounds, it's walk 20,000 steps or or whatever that story is. The one thing that I see in people, you know, my network that said, "Hey, I want to do what you're doing." is to that kind of point, they've looked at the result like I want to make money on YouTube. Well, that's that's not how this starts, at least in my opinion, right? It's I want to you should if you're not willing to do 100 videos on whatever the topic is, don't even bother. Just don't even bother. Create your first 100 videos. If you're going to create a YouTube channel, you must sign up to do 100 videos or don't even bother. That's my opinion. What do you think? Yeah. And that sounds, that's going to take sacrifice, you know, like, yeah, exactly. uh, I don't want to go do a hundred pushups right now, but I probably should, <laughs> you know? And so it's, it's, it's that commitment to the painful process. And I, and I guess I don't want to talk people out of it, but I also don't want to talk like, uh, I think, I think online and I'm, I'm not a fan of gurus that overhype things. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not get rich quick. Um, it's not easy. I do believe it's simple. I mean, just I like too. you're saying, you're like, anybody could do this. You look at your buy box, like, and you do it every day and anybody could do it, but you really got to do the work. And so it's, it's the same thing here. And, and I then think the key, another one would be the reason, because, okay, why am I doing the law of sacrifice? Why, why am I putting in the work? Why am I doing the systems? I think people lose sight of the vision and they lose sight of their why. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I and agree. that, that's when you lose the fire. So if, when you you went deep and said even money wasn't the first motivation, impact legacy, impacting future generations was the reason I really want to do this. When you don't feel like sacrificing, you tap back into the vision. And I think when the vision gets foggy, I mean, it's true for leaders, business leaders. When the vision gets foggy, I mean, where there's no vision, the people perish. Uh, where there's no vision, the people cast off restraint. They cast off discipline. Like we actually just, we lose our discipline when we're like, why am I even doing this? Why am I on this diet? You know what? I mean, forget it. Like it's Christmas. Yeah. I see some pie. Like, and so uh, I think by keeping the vision strong, okay, I'm, I'm not just trying to weather the storm of the recession. I also want to build a brand that that rises beyond it. I'm not just trying to uh, make some short-term money. I want to build long-term impact and legacy. I want to build generational wealth. I'm not just trying to uh, make a few videos and start a YouTube channel, just kind of dabbling in it. My plan is to dominate because I want to build something more influential. So I'm positioned for the future in my career, in my side hustle, in my real estate investing business. There's The truth is those with attention and influence and a YouTube channel have a massive advantage over those who do not have it. And for some, you know, I, maybe that's obvious, but it's like for some, I think we just kind of underestimate um, the power of putting in the work today and how that'll position us for tomorrow. Yeah. I think, you know, life is about doing the work, understanding it's a process. I think so many, if you're focused on the 20 pounds or on the million dollars or whatever, it just, it's not, it, do, it's, it doesn't anchor you. It allows you to kind of drift off at other things to get in the way. And that's what I've really seen uh, with folks. The other thing, there's a little hack that I did on my channel. Um, because again, I knew if I just talked to myself and I was the only person on screen, I, I couldn't do it very long, right? There's only so many topics. I'd feel like I'm repeating myself. So I play better off others. And so I've dropped it. I adopted millionaires, right? I talked to a different millionaire, sometimes two a day, and we do three videos each. It's again, if you have a topic, whether it's fixing old Mustangs or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or making coffee or raising kids, you don't have to do it yourself. Find others that are in it with a different experience and pick a topic and talk about it for 10 or 15 minutes. I, it's surprising to me that more people don't do that because a lot of the channels, at least in the finance space, it's one person in front of a camera talking about something when you know, it might be more interactive to wrap it because in disagreements, some of the, my videos that take off are disagreements between experts. It's, it's, it's fun. Why do you think people don't do that more often? Uh, I think that there's a lot of golden secrets that are kind of hidden in plain sight. And I think huh. starting an interview show is one of the smartest and best strategies anyone can do on YouTube. I'm really passionate about video podcasting right now. 
because it's the idea of exactly what we're doing right now. And this can also be cut down into shorts, which you're also doing. It could be put onto audio onto Apple and Spotify. So you can do one activity. You're able to distribute it a lot of places, but also by doing an interview show, like it, it's nice to make a plan, pull out a piece of paper, draw a line down the, down the middle and say like, what's the best thing that could happen? And what's the worst thing that could happen? If you start a YouTube channel by yourself, you just might, you know, never really take off. You're creating a lot of videos. It does, nothing happens. And, and that's, that's certainly a scenario. If you start an interview show, okay. Uh, even if you could put the best thing that's going to happen, channel grows influential, you're throwing a mastermind, all this goodwill, yeah. you know, like momentum. And it's just getting started. I can't wait till Vegas. Like I'm trying to, yeah. let's get to 50,000 subscribers. Like, and so, uh, you know that, and then, and it's also just getting, started. where are you in three years, five years, 10 years, you, you launch your next book and you, you do your next event and all this different stuff. So that's all the best stuff that can happen. I, you know, I have too much money that I know what to do with. Like, these are the best things, but on the worst case of starting an interview show, you, get smarter. You yeah. get to connect with um, others that may become lifelong friendships, associates, yep. business partners, people to collaborate with, people you learn from, iron sharpens iron. So yeah. I think that interview shows, you, you also, you've outsourced the content creation. It is easier, like it's more sustainable, but it doesn't Absolutely. mean it's less valuable. And so, and it's kind of like, uh, there's a framework that's out there that's taught that if you're also not, you could be a knowledge broker, a reporter, or you could be the results expert. And so for some people, they're like, I'm not the expert yet. Well, the way to become the expert is to start an interview show, because after a while of doing this, you're the one. It's like, I, I, I feel the same way when I interview people. It's like everybody else gets to watch this, but I'm the one that's getting the value. Like I get, I get to, to get, ask my questions. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. And and. Like, well, I, because I'm a fan would absolutely have jumped on the phone with you. Uh, if you just DM me or whatever, because you have out taken the time to build the platform, it's like a no brainer. Like you could get access to all kinds of people. Now, someone might say, well, I'm at zero. How do I start? You just start one friend at a time. Exactly. Then you start with maybe one person that knows somebody else at a time. And then it starts to grow. So it can lead to other doors and other opportunities. And so I 100% I uh, think that an interview show is the hack. One other thing on mine, and there might be a couple, but however long we have is the other reason people fail is they um they stop learning. Oh, See, now yes. I've been on YouTube. My co-author, Benji Travis, uh, I started my first YouTube channel for a small church in a small town an hour north of Seattle in 2007, two years after YouTube started. I met Benji a couple of years later at the YMCA. Him and his wife were more, she was a beauty YouTuber, beauty and hair. And then they started a vlog. So they were kind of more like that YouTube celebrity influencer. I was first doing it in the church world. Then I started doing freelance work for authors, speakers, pastors, small businesses, kind of doing video production and YouTube channel management and really was into the SEO behind the scenes stuff. So we, we, we connect up. The punchline is we've been in this a long time. So we've seen people come and go. We've seen channels rise and fall. We've seen channels skyrocket like we've seen that we've really watched the 15 minutes of fame and it's been like 10x fame like massive fame but also where are they today we've been going to vidcon for over a decade basically and some of the headliners which is kind of the biggest online video conference and uh we were the some of the headliners early on are kind of nowhere to be found today and what i've learned is that yesterday's home runs will not win today's games yeah so if somebody finds something that works once on YouTube, this is a world where you, you got to be reinventing yourself. And this is true in every industry, although some industries may have more forgiveness for a longer time. They're not as disruptive. This yeah. is something you got to always be learning. You're thinking about the algorithm, thinking about how best practices are changing. This goes back to it's one of those habits. It kind of ties this all the way into the beginning. It's not just like, OK, I need to learn enough, get started, and then I'm good. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I know you're co you're committed to mastery and lifelong learning, but like that's a huge key is to uh, make it a lifestyle of learning about content creation, leveling up your communication. How can where's the market going next? How should I pivot my topics, my content strategy, and just being thoughtful about that. I think not in necessarily an anxious or stressed out way, but just in that step by step, consistent. I'm going to keep learning, and not just from experts, but also from your audience. I found that the best, yes, the creators who understand the viewer best wins YouTube channels that listen and, and steer, you got to have your own vision, 
but it's a collaborative effort. I know you love this community so much. Mm -hmm. And so as you're listening, you get in, in, inspiration for, and even Absolutely. the fact you're doing in-person things and stuff, like the deeper you're connected with your community, that's going to protect you because yeah. things shift and things move. And so while some creator might disappear because something pivots, they're not ready for it in two years, you're still going because you're ready to pivot, change, and you never stop learning. Yeah. One of the things I want to kind of close out this conversation on is I believe uh, my world, right? The YouTube finance education modeling world. I believe this recession is going to spank some of these creators. Mm. A lot of them uh, got lucky with timing. Uh, also in my world of real estate, fear grows faster. I believe once we get into this recession, the recession gets hard. People are going to start to turn off fear eventually, and they're going to want hope. And the beauty is I just will keep being me. I won't ever sell out to fear. And I will be documenting every deal I do. I've already done two right out of the MLS and people say it's crazy. I'll document them. I'll show walkthrough videos. And uh, I really do believe there's a lot of people preaching fear that is going to get turned. People are just turn off fear in six months. It's like, I'm done being scared. I mm. want some hope. So uh, I think that's coming. So what do you think of that? Yeah, you know, w the way I would are label that is another key to longevity and that is authenticity and integrity yeah. and that's one of the things i respect about you because you're making an ethics-based decision to say i'm not going to just play into clickbait i'm not going to just play into short-term strategies to get views i care about my long-term brand and i think that's everything so i agree i think that and, and as, as things, you could trick people for a while, but in the internet age, there's the only winning strategy is to be transparent, to be authentic. We're not saying you have to be perfect. And if you make mistakes, you own them. This whole FTX thing is insane. And obviously the, who even knows the full fallout now and different, you know, creators, you have the, the, the Lord titles one, two, the Scottish titles or whatever, just different things that are happening. And, and this is things we deal with. We're not perfect at Think Media, but we just had an all-team retreat. We talked about our theme for next year. We always have an annual theme. Our theme for next year is Built to Last. Nice. And, uh, and it's all about, man, is our foundation solid? And it's based actually on a Bible verse that says anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built on an unshakable foundation. When the storms came and the rain came, it did not fall. But then there's those like the foolish man who built on the sand. And that's what we're about to go into. And so we I want agree. to be built to last. We want to be built on an unshakable foundation. And part of that is me saying, we. my opening to my mini keynote to our, our small team was the FTX. Yeah. I was like, this was not built to last. Yeah. You know, this was not, this was not a built to last group. We have, uh, if you hear about the, whatever in Cancun or whatever the thing was, we got amphetamines. I think this is a polyamorous group. You got, you're playing, uh, you know, league Fast of legends while doing yeah. 200 million deals. You're, yeah. you're leveraging upon leveraging upon leveraging an unregulated thing to go gamble and all this kind of stuff. This is for practices and behaviors. This is a three-year run. Talk about a shot up. I mean, this thing was valued at like almost 35 billion or 32 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then a major crash. And it's actually so biblical. It's literally, uh, you know, not built to last, built on the rock. And so to that end, I would, and this isn't, I don't want this to even come across at all preachy in the sense like, this is probably one of my biggest weaknesses. If I go to like my darker nature, it would be unmitigated ambition. If I don't check my ambition, I don't check my ego. I just want to grow for growth sakes. That's what takes shortcuts. Whereas if I'm thinking calmly and wisely, it's like, no, I'd rather build slow. And I, and, and seeing your ethics, it's that same thing. It's like, well, well, these guys might go viral and then crash one round all the time, just slow and steady wins, man, just slow and steady wins doing the work and, okay. and building a reputation, one relationship at a time because of okay. authenticity and integrity, huge key for not failing and building a YouTube channel to last. Yeah. Folks, do yourself a favor. Uh, we're going into a recession. I, I, I've said many times, I think 2023 might be the worst economic macro year. Uh, it's going to be a great micro year for Olivia and I uh, because of what we're doing and because of this book, YouTube Secrets. You can already see things on my channel changing because of this. Sean, where can people find you? 
Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel on social media. That's all. That's the handle for all the accounts. And then uh, Think Media is the YouTube channel for more YouTube tips, as well as tips for gear, live streaming, accessories. So you can start creating content and building your business. Awesome. Thank you so much.